Wonderful, wonderful. Take your Bible, turn with me to the book of Isaiah, uh, Isaiah chapter number nine, Isaiah chapter number nine. Oh boy, glad you're here tonight. Good to be in church. And all around us, uh, people are getting ready for Christmas. And uh, you know, in some ways, you can go through a store, and recently I was in a store and they were playing uh, Christmas music, and there was a screechy voice, and here comes Santa Claus here, and I was like, oh, and I was waiting for a Christmas song about Jesus did not hear one, and uh, often the world is celebrating Christmas, but they, they've taken Christ out of Christmas, but we as Christians need to remember the Christ of Christmas, and that's very, very important, Christ of Christmas. Christmas, Remembering the Christ of Christmas is the title of the, the message tonight, or Keeping Christ in Christmas. We get to Isaiah chapter number 9. We're going to read two verses, Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. If you'll stand with me for the reading of God's Word, and we'll read both of these verses all together in unison, starting in verse number 6. Ready? For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. It's a well-known verse. We've read it quite often, but boy, his name, his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. The name of Jesus, uh, the wonderful God that we have, Let's keep Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ in Christmas. Let's remember the Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus, a wonderful counselor, mighty God in this Christmas time. Before we go any further, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we love you. And Lord, I pray that you help us to stop and really the sermon could be called Jesus because I want to put our focus and our mind on you. And Lord, help us to remember who you are and really the names that you are called throughout the word of God. And help us to be reminded that you are wonderful. Help us to be reminded that you are a counselor. You're the mighty God. And Lord, I pray that you love us and uh, you continue to love us. Help us to continue to love you. Please bless the rest of the service in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Oh, there was a play, Romeo and Juliet, and uh, a famous line, a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. And uh, you think about the name Rose, but what's in a name? And there's a lot in a name. Uh, those names of Jesus right there, wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. There's a lot in the name of Jesus. There's a lot in the name Emmanuel. And uh, you think about a name. When think, think about these names I, I call out. Joe Biden. What's in that name, Joe Biden? Uh, Elvis Presley. You know, somebody who's visiting uh, they were visiting uh, Israel, coming down from Haifa, and you go to a stop, and it's a, it's, a, it's a diner that's filled with Elvis Presley memorabilia. And uh, they thought, man, why in the world is this in Israel? Elvis Presley. Uh, you think about Billy Sunday, or uh, Adolf Hitler, or Oprah Winfrey, or uh, Tom Brady. Or you think about the name Satan. Uh, it brought a lot of emotions, the Satan After School Club. I think of my, my names in my family, my wife Mandy. It brings uh, back some thoughts. We were sitting at the dinner table with my daughter Andrea and Anna Joy a couple of days ago, and I have a, a sort of a pet name for both of them. I always call Andrea Pretty Girl, and I call Anna Joy my sweet girl. And uh, then I said, you know what? You're both pretty girls, and you're both sweet girls. But they're, they're names, and names mean something. The name brings powerful emotions and thoughts. As you look there in Isaiah chapter number 9, verse number 6, his name shall be called Wonderful. Now say that with me. Just say the name Wonderful. Wonderful. 
and think about the Christ of Christmas. When we're thinking about the Lord Jesus Christ, think wonderful. Wonderful, it's, it ought to excite wonder or admiration. It ought to uh, lead you to say, wow, he's the wonder of it all. Do you know verses about, about wonderful in the Bible? Have you ever looked through the Bible about the word wonder or wonderful or wonderfully in the Bible? Can you think of any verses? What about uh, Psalm 139? And why don't you do this? Go over to Psalm 139 with me. I want to just look in the book of Psalms. Some of the times uh, it uses the word wonderful or wonderfully. And uh, look at this. In Psalm 139, if you're able to be there, verse number 14, and I, starts with the word I, I will praise thee. Who? God. Why? For I am fearfully and what? Wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. And you know what? You're wonderfully made. He shall be called wonderful. And you know the wonderful made us wonderfully. And uh, boy, you think about it. We're God's creation. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and he created us wonderfully. We're created in the image of God. He's wonderful. And you know you have something wonderful in your life. If you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, I want to say it again. You have something wonderful in your life if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. Praise the Lord. Go over to Psalm 107, if you will. Uh, we'll go back, and then we're, we're going to go all over the place. 107, this is interesting. Oh, wonderful. His name should be called Wonderful. I ought to uh, get us to stop and say, wow, wow. Look at 107, verse 8. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness, finish it with me, and for his wonderful works to the children of men, exclamation point. Now that's, that's crying out. Oh, don't, don't you wish that people would praise the Lord? Don't you wish that they would give him honor and glory? Uh, don't you wish that they could look at the sun and the moon and stars and immediately not think of a big vein, but could think of, of the great God that created them? Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. God, God who is wonderful, Jesus, who is wonderful, created many wonderful works to the children of men. Praise the Lord. Look at verse number 15. Look at this. I think this is important. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness, finish it with me, and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Look at verse 21. I, I think this is important. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness, finish it with me, and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Look at verse number 31. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness, finish it with me, and for his wonderful works to the children of men. It was interesting, when I was over in Israel, uh, Brother John Reynolds, he, he would see stuff, and he would, his biggest words, he'd go, wow. And he would just see something, he'd go, wow. Did you see that? Wow. And, and I remember one of the first times I noticed that, we were going over uh, from, uh, we were going from Jerusalem over to the Dead Sea, and it was February when I first noticed this, but it was this green grass, and he goes, wow. Look at that. You're here at a time you get to see green grass. It doesn't happen very often. He goes, wow. And he praised the Lord. And he noticed the green grass and he said, wow, the Lord did that. Boy, you're blessed. You know, there's a lot of wow moments in our lives that we miss. And one of the, the, the biggest wows we have is our wonderful God. Wonderful. His name is Wonderful. Well, you have something, you have something wonderful this Christmas. His name is Jesus. His name is wonderful. You could go on. I'll read these. Psalm 111, verse 4. He hath made his wonderful works to be remembered. We ought to remember them. And, and Psalm 119, verse 129. Thy testimonies are wonderful. Woo! God's word. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. And then his testimonies, the word is called uh, wonderful right there. They're wonderful. Man alive, that's good news right there. 
You have something to celebrate. You have something to have joy about. You have something to have happiness about because he is wonderful. Jesus' name is wonderful. His name is spoken, and we have a sense of admiration, awe, reverence for that name, wonderful. Look over back there or think, think just remember, in, in uh, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, his name is wonderful, and then it says, what's the next one? Counselor. His name is wonderful, and then his name is Counselor, counselor, uh, it's a person who gives advice, but it's actually one who is, has the authority to give advice. And, and we, we think about God, he is, he is the counselor, he's counselor. He has the authority to give advice. He has the authority to give true wisdom. Can you think of verses on counsel? Counsel is mine and sound wisdom, it says in Proverbs chapter eight. Counsel is mine. He is counselor. Okay, why is this important? Because you're living your life. You need to make decisions. And sometimes you don't know what to do. So you begin to wonder, what should I do? And you sometimes, if you're not careful, you try to figure it all out. What am I going to do? The great news is we have a counselor. And when you remember his name is counselor, you can say, hey, I don't have to have it all figured out but I know one who does have it figured out, and you bow your knee to counselor, the one who has the authority to give advice, and he's one who says, counsel is mine. I love it, Romans chapter 11, verse 34. Just turn there, Romans chapter 11, verse 34. Mark this one, underline it, think about what it means. We sing those songs, where could I go but to the Lord? And we sing that, problems, uh, advice, difficulty, struggles, where could I go? Well, you want to go to the counselor? And then you, you look at this, Romans chapter 11, look at verse 34. Look at this. For who hath known the mind of the Lord? Or who hath been his counselor? Who hath been his, he doesn't have, he doesn't have a counselor, he is counsel. That's why he's wonderful. Uh, he's a counselor right there, counselor, Hey, you need, to, you need advice? You need help? Man, go to the Lord. He's your counselor. Man, praise the Lord. You can go to him as your counselor. You know, this side of eternity, you go to an attorney for counsel? Well, sometimes you wonder if they ever hear you. And uh, you, you go to them and you, you beg and plead, I need advice. And then they say, well, give us some money and uh, give us a lot of money and give us a retainer or something like that. Next thing you know, they take all your money and you still wonder, what am I supposed to do? And they never get back with you and it's a mess. But you have one that will get back with you, one that will help you. He is the supreme counselor and boy, his name is wonderful. His name is counselor. <laughs> Who hath been his counselor? He doesn't have any counselor. He is the counselor. And uh, oh, then we, as, as you think about it, his name is Wonderful Counselor. What's the next one? The Mighty God. Okay, Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God. We're sort of memorizing this. You don't know this, most of you do. Name is Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God. Okay, that, we're getting closer there. Wonderful, you have a place? Uh, yeah, I know, I know, I know. I messed you all up. Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God. Now we got that. So think about it. He's the Mighty God. His name is the Mighty God. Uh, Genesis 1, in the beginning, God. So this counselor, Jesus, is God. In the beginning, he's there. He created the heaven and the earth. I, I turn over there, 1 Timothy chapter 3. Turn over to 1 Timothy chapter 3. You hear that roar out there? Don't, don't worry, it's a nuclear bomb, no big deal. <laughs> That'd be a good way to go. You know, bam, we're up in heaven with the, God. It wouldn't be that bad. That'd be okay. I'm not saying it is. I'm just kidding. So one of the ladies just had a heart attack. Don't worry, it's okay. We're okay, we're okay. Oh, you got to have a sense of humor. No, you don't have to? Okay. All right, look at this. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Look at this. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. Then what's that next word? God, God, G-O-D, was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, 
preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. That's speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, God, and it refers to Jesus being God. That's why the new modern translations are bad. They take out God and put something else in there, he. And there's a big difference between a he and God. Jesus is God. The Bible clearly says it over and over again. Praise God for the King James Bible. Amen. 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 Praise God for the King James Bible. Amen. Man, we're blessed. But God was manifest in flesh. His name is the mighty God. Jesus is God, not one of the gods, but the mighty God, not a God of silver or gold, but the mighty God, not a God of our imagination, but the mighty God, not a God of myth or legend, but the mighty God. And his name is the mighty God, not a little Satan who has no power other than the Lord allows it. Boy, he's the King of kings and Lord of lords, which goes to the next one. His name is Wonderful. Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father. Now that, that's interest, the everlasting Father. And this, this is interesting because God, Jesus, uh, as we think about it, he's the everlasting Father. You know, you know the Lord's Prayer? We, we said it in the bulletin right there. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. But our Father, we're talking to God. And when we bow our, our knee and we pray, we're talking to God himself. He's our father. He's the everlasting father. And this is a reminder that Jesus is a part of the Godhead, the great three in one. Jesus is the everlasting father. And think about the everlasting, that word everlasting, not just for a short period of time, but, but from beginning to end. And his name is everlasting. Go over to Revelation, Revelation chapter one real quick. Look at this. Everlasting Father, not just for a moment in time. Everlasting Father. And look at verse number eight. Speaking of Jesus, it says, and it says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is? And which, is, which was and which is to come, the Almighty. <laughs> He's always been and he always will be. He's the everlasting Father. Boy, th this is wonderful, wonderful. Go, go over to Revelation chapter uh, 1, verse 11. Look at verse 11, a couple verses later. Saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. Look at chapter 21, Revelation 21. Revelation 21. From beginning to end, everlasting, never ending, it's hard to even understand. Look at this in verse uh, six, chapter 21, verse six. And he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Have you ever like tried to count? Like how, how far have you ever counted? I remember back in, oh, sixth grade? We had Apple IIe computers. Anybody remember the Apple IIe's? Anybody else? Shows your age. And so the Apple IIe's. And uh, we could do like write a little program on there and get it to count. And we got it to count and we were getting it to count to a million. And if you started, it took, it took like 16 straight hours to count from one to a million. And I imagine in my mind, okay, if I was to count, have you ever tried to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, how far have you ever gotten? Has anybody ever made it to 1,000? Yeah, yeah. Has anybody ever made it to 10,000? I don't, probably not. I mean, that's a long ways. And you think about everlasting, imagine in, in, infinity. Infinity, like it never ends, is that right? And, and that's, that's where our God is, it never ends. One million years from now, he still is. And we'll still have an eternity left. He's everlasting, the everlasting Father. He's the beginning and the end. Wow, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. The last one there was uh, the Prince of Peace. The Prince, his name is Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the everlasting Father and the 
Prince of Peace. So try those with me. His name is Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Now, this is important. Hey, you need, you need something wonderful for Christmas? You already have it. His name's Jesus. Boy, you need some counsel? Hey, you have it. His name's Jesus. Boy, you, you, who's the mighty God? Jesus is the mighty God. Hey, you need uh, to be reminded the everlasting Father. He's going to be on the throne 10,000 years from now. He's the everlasting Father. And by the way, you could be a child without a dad, but you have a heavenly Father. Boy, that's good news right there. And then the Prince of Peace. I think this is vitally, vitally important. Peace. And, uh, you know, we live in a world that is in turmoil. I'm driving, and this happens all the time. It's nothing new, but it happens every week. I was driving this week, and I didn't do anything. I'm just driving. I'm driving on Campostella Road. The speed limit's 25 miles an hour, and I'm going 25 miles an hour, and I'm taking a left on Burn Street right there. And my, oh my, the man, man behind me was mad. I have no idea. He's on my tail, and he's just, uh, uh, uh. and then as soon as I took a left right there, I didn't even wait for anybody. I just went like this, and he's like sort of swerved into me, ring, like that. And I think that that's the way people live. They're filled with anxiety. That's why we sang all your anxiety, all your care, bring to the mercy seat, leave it there. They're filled often with hate. Hate, that's why... Problems with people shooting in the Walmart, filled with hate and anger, wrath and malice. By the way, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. And you'll see all of those adultery, fornication, wrath, malice, all of that in there. But, but we have the Prince of Peace. We have the opportunity to go to the Prince of no anxiety, no worry. It's all going to be okay. And you know, you can have that anxiety where you're, you're on the, the, the Sea of Galilee and it's dark and the waves and the storms are coming and all of a sudden, we're gonna die. And Jesus is right there with you. And what does he say? Peace, be still. Peace, be still. And you and I as Christians can live with peace. It's one of the greatest things we can have this side of eternity. We can have peace. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, Peace. Now, here's the problem. We're sinful flesh, and we all struggle at times with anxiety. We all struggle at times where we're not looking to the Prince of Peace. That's why we have to remember the name. He's the Prince of Peace. We all struggle sometimes uh, looking at our own self, and we're, Philip, what am I going to do? And you fill in the blank with your problems or your troubles, and we begin to fret, we begin to serve, and when we do that, we forget very easily the name. He's the Prince of Peace, the Prince of Peace. He's the one that will give you peace in the midst of the storm. Uh, by the way, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. Philippians chapter four, verse seven. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds, how? Through Christ Jesus. Well, we have peace through Christ, peace through the Prince of Peace. Uh, Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering. That's one of the greatest uh, awesome attributes we can have as, as a Christian is peace. It's like one of the great, I'm just saying, it's great. I don't think this side of eternity we can get rid of the chaos. You know, you turn, you, if you turn on the news, you look at the news, or you look at your and just any news page that's on the web, like I woke up this morning and a little bit later on I looked at the, the Drudge Report. On the front page right there it shows uh, Putin and his nuclear uh, missiles and he's getting ready to attack the West. It says something like that. I'm like, oh, that's great. And then you've got to click the article and you read about it. He's not really going to attack the West. But, I mean, you see that immediately like, ah, ah. And you've got to remember the Prince of Peace. And so when that trouble comes, remember his name, the Prince of Peace. He's a God that can give you a peace that what? Passeth all understanding. Now, there's many more names, but I'd, I'd like you to turn over to Matthew chapter number one. Matthew chapter number one. There, there, there's so many times people have gone through the Bible and they've listed the names of, of Christ. You could look at Advocate, 
almighty, Alpha and Omega, amen, the apostle of our profession, the atoning sacrifice for our sins, the author of life, the author and perfecter of our faith, the author of salvation, the beginning and the end, the blessed and only ruler, the bread of God, the bread of life, the capstone, the chief cornerstone, the chief shepherd, Christ, creator, deliverer, eternal life, everlasting father, gate, faithful and true, faithful witness, faithful and true witness, the first and the last, the firstborn from the dead, God, good shepherd, great shepherd, great high priest, the head of the church, the heir of all things, the high priest, the holy and true, holy one, hope, hope of the glory, the horn of salvation, the great I am, the image of God, the king eternal, the king of Israel, the king of the Jews, the king of kings, the king of ages, lamb, lamb of God, lamb without blemish, the last Adam, life, the light of the world. And you could go on and on and on and on and on. It's got a lot of names, amen. But those names mean something and they can help you. Wonderful, counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. And here, we get to, to this one, Matthew chapter number one, verse 18. Now the birth of who? Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. This is the Christmas story. Remember, keeping Christ in Christmas. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she, now look at the verse 21, just, just say this with me. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Woo! His name is Jesus. And uh, boy, that's good news right there. And we, we know that song. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's just something about that name. Master, Savior, Jesus. Like a fragrance after the rain. Jesus, 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms shall all pass away, but there's something about that name. The name of Jesus. Now, go over to Philippians chapter 2. The name of Jesus. So Christmas, keeping Christ in Christmas. Remember, he's wonderful. You have something wonderful. You may not get the, the gift you were looking for. <laughs> you may not. But you have the best Christmas gift ever, Jesus. He is wonderful. Counselor. Boy, you need advice. You need some place to go. You don't know what to do. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding in all thy ways. Acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. He's a counselor, the mighty God. God was made manifest. He's the everlasting father, the prince of peace. His name is Jesus. And then Philippians chapter two, verse five. I, I, I just love this. I love saying this. I love reading this and quoting this. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you. By the way, sometimes we gotta throw out our mind and throw it out and replace it with the mind of Christ. How? The word of God. Saturate your mind with the word of God. Garbage in, garbage out. Garbage, often we fill our hearts and our minds with garbage. Say that again, garbage. Fill your hearts and your minds with Jesus, his word. Let this mind be in you. That ought to make us, we're Bible believers, we ought to be Bible readers. We ought to be faithful to listening to the preaching of God's word. We ought to be faithful about talking about God among God's people. We ought to be faithful Bible believers, Bible readers, Bible studiers. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robber to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was mind made in the likeness of men 
And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Woo! I was like adding, amen. amen. The name of Jesus. Wow! One day, maybe not very long from now, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Those young people mocking, mocking Christians, and really they were not really mocking Christians, they were mocking the Christ of, of Christians. Do you understand that? Over down in our, our uh, down at the, the, the city hall area over there, the name of Jesus, they're gonna bow. They're gonna bow their knee, whether they like it or not, or believe it or not, they're gonna bow their knee to the king of kings. And maybe not long from now, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Now, it's important. If you're saved and serving Jesus, you're not gonna regret it. You're not gonna regret being faithful to your Bible reading. You're not gonna be regretting faithful to your church attendance. You're not gonna be regretting telling people about Jesus Christ, amen. But if you're not saved and if you don't trust Jesus as your savior, you're gonna regret it. And uh, what do I mean by that? I mean, if you don't trust Christ, you realize you're a sinner destined for hell, but Jesus paid that price and you cry out, Lord, save me, not by works of righteousness, but by Jesus, he is the way and you trust him as your savior. Boy, that's the only way to heaven. Isaiah chapter nine, verse six says this, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful. Remember that, Wonderful, what's the next one? Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Hey, keep Christ in Christmas, let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we love you. And wow, if we went through that whole list of your names throughout the Bible, wow, there's so much more to learn, so much more to be remembered, Lord. There's a lot in a name. Uh, Lord, I, I'm thankful that you are wonderful. And Lord, sometimes this life, you know, we live a life where we often don't have what we think we want, but in reality, we have you, and you are wonderful. And help us to be reminded of that. Help us when we need counsel, not if we need counsel, but when we need counselor, counsel, that we go to you. And you to remind us, counsel is mine. And help us to go to you for that counsel. Lord, help us to be reminded that you're God. In the beginning, God. And uh, you have the power, Lord. Help us to be reminded that you're our heavenly Father, the everlasting Father from beginning to end, but we have a, a heavenly Father. Help us to be reminded that you are the Prince of Peace. And I pray that you help us as Christians to have that peace. Not to want it, but to have it. Boy, it's right there. But the only way to it is through you. Lord, we love you. Thank you for being good to us. Thank you for this Bible study in Jesus' name. Amen.